Um, please help me welcome Philippe Kafka from ESET. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm going to speak about the company, which might be closer than you actually think. So, when companies get hacked, they tend to recover. But what happens when your company gets hacked and all your products become unusable? That is the hacking team case, so let's take a look. I guess that the company doesn't need any introduction here. The company was developing spyware and selling to governments as law enforcement tools. The security community didn't know which spyware they were developing of, um, until 2012, when researchers from Dr. Webb attributed the spyware in the wild to the hacking team company. In 2014, it was revealed by Citizen Lab that companies sell their products to oppressive regimes, which are misusing them against political dissidents, journalists, and other similar people. As you can see on the screen, it is not that unusual for offensive companies to sell to oppressive regimes. We will not cover this aspect of the topic. Uh, we will focus on technical details. But if you are interested, I recommend you to stay here in this room after the, after the presentation, as Citizen Lab will speak about it. In 2015, ironically, the company got hacked. I guess that everyone here remembers the major data breach when everything leaked public. Um, the leak included five zero-day exploits. It also included email. This one was funny, um, written by their CEO. He was laughing at uh, Finfisher, their competitor, when they got hacked one year earlier. The leak also includes their flagship product called Remote Control System, or also Galileo. As you can see, they had spyware for computer. They also had, had spyware for mobile phones. And they were also developing a UFI rootkit. This was the first UFI rootkit developed in a malware context, not as a proof of concept by security researchers. Although we didn't see the UFI rootkit in the wild. And of course, in order to install this UFI rootkit, you either needed a physical access to the computer or exploit a firmware vulnerability. Here you can see a part of the license key of the remote control system. It basically also describes an order from their customer. We can see here that this customer bought uh, agents for, I mean, like spyware for a computer for uh, Windows. He did not buy spyware for OS X and Linux. He bought spyware for Android, and he also bought access to exploit portal. So as you can see, the business model is as any other. Their customers can choose what they want to buy, how much they want to buy. Since the leak also included the source code and the builder and the spyware, it comes as a no surprise that cyber criminals started to reuse the leaked spyware. This was the case with Callisto Group, reported by F-Secure, when some cyber criminals grabbed the spyware from the leaked uh, and started to reuse it, you know. And now it starts to be interesting. There started to appear new activity about hacking team. It started with hacking team CEO claiming that, um, yes, we suffered major data breach, but we are going on. We are still developing the products and we are still in business. Later, it was uh, reported by Las Nampa that uh, hacking team received fundings by a mysterious investor, and later Motherboard revealed that this mysterious investor has some ties to Saudi government. Very recently, uh, LDR rep reported that hacking team sold licenses and the spyware to Mexico's government in 2017. So from non-technical point of view, it really, start, uh, it really appeared like the company wanted to recover and is still in business, what makes sense, because they were in a very prominent business. But there was no technical 
report, no technical research about their new activities. That's why we started the research. In the beginning, we exchanged some technical information with Citizen Lab. They shared us uh, modified hacking team samples being used in 2016 and 17. And then we together discovered a new modified hacking team sample being used in 2018. So what do we know about, about the spyware? This spyware names suggests that spear phishing infection vector was used. The first two spyware names were used to target high profiles, such as uh, diplomats, and the first one was used to target two ambassadors in an African country. It came from this email address. The spyware has several stages. First stage is called by hacking team developers scout. The second is soldier or elite. The elite is a premium version of the spyware, advanced and premium. So it depends whether their customer bought the elite or not, so they can use it or not. Spyware samples are packed with VM protect, so we had to unpack them. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have time to show you how we unpacked VM protected spyware, but if you are interested, we wrote it into the VB paper, into the brochure. So if you are interested in unpacking our VM protect, please check our paper. Scout. It is first stage, very simple spyware, which is designed to steal some basic information from the system, from the computer, report to CNC server, and download the second stage. Second stage, the soldier, is quite good spyware. Uh, it is very well designed. Uh, it has proper memory, hand memory management, error handling, and so on. Let's talk about the actual payload. It can steal various information, as you can see, from social networks, also files from Google Drive, and also location. It can grab and extract location of the photo on Facebook if there is some available. Some other functionality is self-explanatory, but I will explain geolocation. It collects uh, information from Wi-Fi networks available around, and based on it, it tries to determine the location of the victim. URLs, um, it can steal various information from popular web browsers, like uh, bookmarks, save data, history, and so on. We saw there very interesting and probably unique functionality, which we didn't see before. It can also change a configuration in Tor browser. So you know, even if the victim will clean the machine from the spyware, the changed configuration in Tor browser remains. So this helps the attacker to track the victim even better. This was also in the leak. The new functionality, which was not in the leaked soldier, is that it can also record Skype calls, capture keys, keystrokes, and monitor mouse. It means that it can take a screenshot on a mouse click. This functionality actually was in the leak, but not in Soldier. It was in Elite, in the premium agent. So they just moved it from Elite to the Soldier agent. Completely new is scheduling uninstallation. It means that malware operator can choose when the malware will uninstall from the system. And so the whole operation will terminate. This is the example of a configuration which is embedded in the binary. Here we can see that this customer, for example, oh, I can see it here. Maybe not, but you can read it, that this customer chose uh, taking screenshots every two minutes. Once the customer buys the agent, they can choose their configuration up to their choice. So, as you can see, the spyware is in active development. There are few modifications. The question is, who is developing the spyware? Some cyber criminals like Callisto Group? Or are we really looking at the rise of the Phoenix? Based on the artifacts which we as a malware researchers were able to analyze, we tried to answer the question. We analyzed code patterns, development habits, and we wanted to answer this question while keeping in mind 
possible false flags. So now let's compare the modified hacking team sample, the most recent one, with the leaked one. When Scout installed on the system before the leak, it increased its size to 4 megabytes. After the leak, the modified hacking team sample had this constant, uh, constant changed to 6 megabytes. Before the leak, I'm sorry, I skipped one slide. Before the leak, the Scout was generating random numbers by rent function. After the leak, they changed this function to Microsoft Windows API function cryptgen random. Before the leak, the Scout had, uh, had a MySleep function. Why a MySleep function? Because some sandboxes are patching sleep in those API functions. So if the malware really wants to sleep, they implemented MySleep function. After the leak, indeed, this function is changed. So these parts of the code are changed. Like It is very strange that guys behind this are changing these parts of the code. If somebody was just reusing the leaked source code, they wouldn't change my sleep function or random number generation, generation. So it started to appear what we really suspected that hacking team developers are behind this because if somebody was just reusing the leaked source code, they would add some functionality or change more important parts of the code, not my sleep function or random number generation. The spyware had a valid digital certificate at that time. Digital certificates are not that unusual in spyware. We have seen some in the past, but usually we have seen malware signed with a certificate which was issued by Komodo. But this one was issued by Taute. And Taute is a certification authority which verifies the entities. And they issued this certificate to a Zyber LTD, which is a London company, a real UK company signed a spyware. So we checked all modified post-hack hacking team samples, and we extracted digital certificates. As you can see, it started with Valeriano Bedeshi. Valeriano, Be <coughs> sorry, Val Valeriano Bedeshi is a co-founder of hacking team. Of course, Bedeshi is not stupid enough to sign a spyware and sell to customers. But this sample had a private CNC set. You know, the, the CNC was within the local network, so it was only a testing case that she was testing the sample. Then these three companies, like Megabit, ADD Audit, and Media, are again um, certificates issued by Taute, so a real Moscow companies. There is a lot of information on this slide, so I will explain. We analyzed together more than 40 post-hack modified hacking team samples, and we extracted important information from it. As you can see on the left, there is a compilation timestamp. This compilation timestamp is real. It is genuine, not faked. How do we know? Because every time after, like, every time we have seen the spider in the wild, after a few weeks or sometimes days, after the compilation timestamp. Mm -hmm. I can see that um, you can't see the whole picture. So the first column is compilation timestamp. On the right, you can see digital certificates which were used to sign the spyware. And in the middle, you can see uh, the versions of the scout and soldier which are embedded, which are in the binary. Now, let's focus on the pre-hack uh, time. So before the leak, the company, was, uh, the company was pushing new updates of the spyware every few months and sometimes every few weeks. You know, every few month, months, new spyware, um, new version of the spyware appeared. And they were also putting digital certificates there. In 2015, the company was hacked and the most recent spyware, which leaked that time, was version 13. And as you can see in the red, version 13 was reused by Callisto Group, which I mentioned in the beginning. That is the version which uh, cyber criminals took from the leak, and they started to reusing it. But uh, 
the other uh, samples after the hack, that, is, that are new modified hacking team samples. It started with Valeriano Bedeshi, and as you can see again, new version of the spyware appears every few weeks or every few months. So as you can see, the versioning is very smooth. This is a screenshot of the remote control system package from the leaked data. As you can see, they had, uh, using, they had been using names of the applications with icons of the application. Uh, I'm talking about this. You can check it in properties. So the applications can have an icon and description and, and so on. And they had been using uh, these names, descriptions, and icons from legitimate applications, right? It was copied. And they had been regularly changing it. So for example, this version of remote control system included uh, these names and, and icons and, and so on of the application. This is a screenshot from the leaked source code. You can see here a history of the export names. For example, remote control system version 9.5 here had uh, this export name. We can see here history. They had been regularly changing the names of the exports. The most recent one at the time of the leak was this one. Um, it looks like the clicker doesn't work anymore. Can I have another one, please? I'm sorry. OK, it works now. So as you can see, another screenshot of the leaked source code. We can see here again history of the user agents. Basically, they had been changing the user agents every few versions of the spyware. And we can see basically a documentation. Uh, a remote control system version 9.5 included this uh, user agent. The most recent was this one. They had been regularly changing it. And they were, they were referring to it as a crisis procedure. URL sync, again, screenshot of the leaked source code. They had been regularly changing these strings across various versions. So we extracted all this data from every modified hacking team sample. And we have found that, again, these strings, these export names, are being regularly changed. Again, user agents. On the left, you can see version of the spyware. On the right, you can see user agent, which is not that important. The important thing is that they are regularly changing it. Every few versions, a new user agent appears. Remember, majority of the code is untouched, is not changed, except these parts of the code, which had been regularly changed also before the leak. It was a typical hacking team development habit. Again, <clears throat> names of the applications with the icon, description, and so on, it is being regularly changed. The URL sync, again, the crisis procedure, which they had been regularly changing, it is changed in the new hacking team spyware samples. So <clears throat> wrapping up the post-hack modified, uh, the post-hack findings, it all started with non-technical reports from the CEO claiming that they are still in business. We found new modified hacking team samples. They had digital certificates. It started with Valeriano Bedeshi, which is co-founder of hacking team. Certificates are, are very common for hacking team, or they had been common for hacking team before the hack. Developers behind this changed only a few parts of the code, and it revealed that they are very familiar with the leaked code, with the leaked source code. It really looked like it is a regular maintenance of the code. The versioning of the spyware was very smooth, as you could see. Uh, there are frequent changes in the, uh, in the code I mean, the crisis procedure, the places which they had been regularly changing before the leak, 
these changes are again in these modified hacking team samples and they are again uh, masquerading uh, the spyware with uh, legitimate applications like description names and icon. So this all with few other evidences fully convinced us that hacking team developers are behind these new modified hacking team samples. But why did they do that? I mean, why did they upgrade their old source code instead of rewriting everything from the scratch? We have two hypotheses. We have two suggestions, not a, like proof or, or like fact, but only hypothesis. First hypothesis is that do you remember the remote control system package? It included a sophisticated spyware for almost every platform. It would be very time consuming to rewrite everything from scratch. And from business point of view, time consuming means expensive. The second hypothesis is that it maybe wasn't necessary. I mean, they achieved the primary goal. They avoided AV detection by combination of VM protect digital certificates descriptions of the application. So it was not necessary to rewrite everything from the scratch. So from business point of view, it was a smart decision. We still didn't disclose everything, what we know about them, basically. We are still keeping a track with them. And very few days ago and a few weeks ago, we detected a new hacking team activity. Again, new modified hacking team spyware sample with new version is signed with a new digital certificate. I, also, I forgot to say that we informed Taute about this issue, that their certificates are used to, to sign a spyware, and they correctly revoked trust in those certificates. So we reported very recently misuse of these certificates, and the re revocation is in progress right now. So what this all means, despite the fact that hacking team is still in business, so we can track them because of potential abuse of their products, because of potentially new malicious techniques, because of maybe new zero days or UFI rootkit. It, it is also interesting that uh, the company survive. You know, the company's business model was based on confidentiality. It was based on the fact that almost nobody knew about their spyware, that almost nobody knew about their customers. So even if everything leaked public and they survived, it's kind of interesting. It also means that um, it is big and evolving business. We can see new customers and these companies are growing. And so we have, when they have a big budget, they can buy their own certificates for valid legitimate companies so they can cover their operations pretty well. Okay, thank you very much for your attention.